Hey everyone, welcome back. Let's write some more neat code today. XOR queries of a subarray. So the idea is that we're given an input array and we're given a array of queries. Now in this case, the array of queries is the same size as the input array, but that's not necessarily always gonna be the case. So for each query, this is what we wanna do. This query right now is zero, one. That means go through the positions from index zero to one XOR all of the values and then add them to some output array. If you take one and XOR it with three, the result is gonna be two. We won't get super in depth into the details of this, but the binary representation of one is this, binary representation of three is this, XOR is basically for every corresponding bit, if they're different, the output is one. If they're the same, the output is zero. So right now they are the same, it's zero here, they're different, it's one here. This is the binary representation of two. Then for this query, we will say the output value is gonna be two. The next query is gonna be one, two. And so we do the same thing. So from index one to index two, we'll just go through all those values, XOR them together. It looks like the result of that is gonna be seven. That's it, that's the problem. Now the brute force clearly is going to be going through every single query. So let's say we have Q queries. And the worst case is that each query involves going through the entire array. It probably won't be the entire array, but it'll be proportional to the array. Let's say the array is of size N. Therefore, in the worst case, the time complexity might be big O Q times N. Now, how can we potentially optimize this? You could think of the queries supposedly, let's say, as intervals. And that's honestly the first thought I had. Like maybe we can take these queries, sort them, and then process them in a way without doing any repeated work. But that's not really going to be helpful. And you can try to implement it if you think it is. Eventually, you'll realize that the time complexity isn't going to be any better than the previous solution, the brute force. This problem involves knowing something about XOR. I don't know if this one was always here, but that should have been a three, sorry about that. Um, but anyways, XORing is like this. Suppose we have some variables A and B and C. The order that we do XOR operations doesn't matter. So suppose I added a C at the beginning. First I did C XOR A, and then maybe I took both of these and XORed them separately, and then I took the result of both of them and then XORed them together. That's gonna be the same regardless of the order that we do them in. That's very important. And the second thing is that if you took two numbers, let's say they're the exact same, doesn't matter what they are, X XORed with X. Maybe I should use a different character, sorry, I'll say N. XORed with N. Regardless of what it looks like, if it's the same number, the bits are gonna be the same in every position. So the result of that is always gonna be zero. So two numbers XORed together cancel each other out. And so if you agree with me that that's true and it's true that the order that we do them in doesn't matter, then you might also agree with my approach, which is gonna involve prefix XORs. If you've never heard of this technique, I would, at the very least, Google the simpler term. The simpler technique involves prefix sums. Prefix XORs is kind of a step above that. I do cover this, I believe, in my advanced algorithms course on neatcode.io, if you're curious. With prefix XORs, this is what we're gonna do. Suppose we computed the prefix XORs for the input array. What that would mean is the first portion, like that is just gonna be one, and then we'd have this, the XOR of all of those together, and we'd also have the XOR of all of those together, and so that would go here, and then all of the XORs of this, and that would go here. If we had that, and suppose we're trying to compute this query, what is the XOR of all of these? That can be computed in constant time like this. We already computed the prefix XOR of the first three. We already computed the prefix XOR of just this, which I mean, in this case is simple. It's just the value itself, but you could have imagined that this range could have been bigger. And so, if you have those two numbers, let's just make it even more clear. Let's give each of these a character name. Let's say this is A, this is B, this is C. If I took the XOR of A, B, C, which I already pre-computed, and with that, I want to cancel out the first portion. I want to get rid of that. How do I do it? Well, I'm not going to subtract a, what's that gonna do? That's not guaranteed to do anything. But if I wanna cancel out that portion, I'm gonna XOR A with that. So if I started with this, and then I take this, this portion, 
Well, I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to get rid of that. And we're just left with B X or C, which of course is what we want in the first place. So that's how this approach is going to work. So when I compute the prefix XORs, I'm actually going to have one spot extra. I could explain it now, but it'll probably make more sense when we like actually run through this and especially when we code it up. So the first value is always going to be zero because imagine if we were trying to do the prefix XOR of like this portion, we'd want to subtract everything that came before us, but that would kind of give us an index out of bounds. So we just add the zero here. Then we want the XOR of just this. That's one. Then we XOR these two. That's two. I believe that's going to be a five, but to be honest, the numbers don't really matter too much. And then lastly, when we're computing the value here, that's going to be all of these XORed. And I guess I should probably mention the way we're going to be computing this array is not going to be like nested loops. We don't need that to compute the value that's going to go here. We want the XOR of all of these XORed with this. But remember, the XOR of all of these, we already computed that. That's over here. So if we want to know the XOR you know, of all of this, we can just do the XOR of five and eight. Very quickly, the binary representation of five, I think, is this. The binary representation of eight, I believe it's going to be over there. So XORing these, we're going to get a one here, one here, and one here. So that's eight plus four plus one, that's 13. I'll put that over there. And again, I'm probably not going to do all of the XOR math for you right now, but no matter what query you wanted to do, we already talked about the really simple one that's over here. But suppose we wanted like the entire thing from zero to three. What's the XOR of all of these? Well, now we can just take, let's call this the left index, the left boundary of the query. And this is the right boundary of the query. We're going to look in our prefix array, the value at the right index. And from that, we want to get rid. We want to remove a certain portion from it. We want to remove everything to the left of this guy. So not the value here, but the value left minus one. And the way I'm actually going to be coding this is actually going to be a little bit different because think about it. This array is actually stacked over here. I had it one shifted to the right. So actually when we're coding it, we're going to take the right index and going to do plus one to get the value that goes over here. And for left, we're not going to do plus one because we want what's directly to the left of that. So this index would be looked up directly with the prefix array, but the right index, we're going to do a plus one. So that's it. We're going to do the prefix at right plus one. And to get rid of the portion at the left index, we're not going to subtract. We're going to XOR it with the prefix at the left portion. So doing it this way, pre-computing this array is going to be a linear time operation. Then running every query is going to just be an O of 1 operation for however many queries we have. So it's going to be something like that. So the overall time complexity is going to be N plus Q. Let's code it up. Remember, the first thing we want to do is compute the prefix array. So I'm going to initialize it with just that leading zero we talked about. We're going to maintain. Actually, we don't need to maintain a separate variable. What we can say is for every n in the array, we can then append to the prefix whatever the last value is in the prefix array, which in Python is really easy to get. You just do the negative one index, but we could also just take the length of this minus one and pass that in here. But we're going to take the last value that we inserted and we're going to XOR it with the current value that we have. So this is going to be pretty simple building the prefix array. Next, we're going to be building the output result and ultimately returning it. And we're going to go through each query to do that. Python is very nice. We can actually unpack that query. Remember, it involves two pieces. It's an array with two pieces. So we can unpack the left and right. All of this is covered in my uh, Python for Coding Interviews course. And then here for the result, well, I guess, what are we computing? We're going to get the value in prefix at right plus one, just like I talked about. And we're going to get rid of the portion from the left by XORing it with a prefix of left. And so this is what we're going to append to the result. So just like that. And you can see it works. I promise you it's efficient. These runtimes are really random. There's just one slight optimization that we can make. And it might not even be allowed, but what if we were allowed to modify the input array? Probably you wouldn't want to do that in most circumstances, but that would make it so we actually I don't need this prefix array. But the problem is that this prefix array, the way we coded it, is going to be one 
element larger than the input array. So now we won't be able to code it with that leading zero. So now you're going to see why I had the leading zero in the first place. It made this part of the code slightly more simple, but now I'm going to show you how to do it without that. So now for n in array, actually we're going to need the index. So I'm going to do for i in range length of the array. And so now to the array at index i, we want the prefix part computed, and that's just going to be the array at index i XORed with whatever element we inserted at i minus 1. But from the beginning, i minus 1 is going to be out of bounds. So let's make sure we start at 1, because the first element in the array is going to be the XOR of itself anyway. And if you wanted to do the little shorthand of this, you could do this XOR equal to that. It doesn't really matter. If you're a beginner, maybe the previous way is actually more readable for you. But now let's get into the more important part here. So now we know that if we had something like one, two, three, and then down here we had the prefixes, this I think would be one, this I think actually would be three, and I think three XORed with three would actually just be zero. So this is array, this is prefix. So now let's say I'm given a query, let's say zero to two. That's the query that I'm given, left to right. Well, now right is going to correspond to the prefix of everything that came before it. So here we can say prefix is just going to be right. But prefix of left is going to be everything that came to the left of that. So we do have to say prefix of left minus one. But now we run into the same potential issue. This could be out of bounds when left is equal to zero. So let's do something else. Let's call this the portion that is our total portion. So I'm gonna have a variable over here. Total is gonna be prefix of right. I'm just doing this to make it a bit more readable. There's a more concise way you could code this if you really wanted to. So this is our total. And this is the part I'm gonna remove. So that, and I'm gonna call that this. So the issue we're trying to deal with is that this could technically be out of bounds. How do we fix it? Well, if it was out of bounds, what value would we want this to be? Like if we had left is zero, then Nothing really comes before that anyway, so that would just be zero. So we can use a ternary operator here. Set this to zero if left is equal to zero. Otherwise, set it to this. It'll be non-zero. And then the rest of this code, I believe, will work. Let's get rid of these comments. Now let me run this. Okay, the one thing I forgot to do was change this from prefix to be the array, the input array. I'm not sure. So I got a runtime error. And the runtime error actually doesn't mention the fact that this variable is not declared unless I'm blind. But anyways, let's just change that to array and this to array as well. And now you can see this one works. This one really isn't any more efficient. I mean, technically it does use less space, but we are modifying the input. So the previous solution was O of N space, where N is the size of the input array. This one is technically constant space since we're not creating a new array. We're just modifying this one.